After being an entrepreneur for 12 years, operating nine businesses where seven of them failed, here are top five lessons that I have learned throughout this journey. Now look, if you're new to this channel, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, and also drop in the comments below what more you'd like to see from us in future videos. So the very first thing, and this I literally live by, like I do not do anything but this. Um, focus and KISS. KISS stands for keep it simple stupid. And when it comes to focus, in the last six years, since 2015 when I discovered Amazon FBA until today, I've done nothing but selling on Amazon. And then a couple of years ago, I started teaching people how to sell on Amazon, right? I've got millions, well not me, but the company has millions and millions and millions of dollars in the bank that I have decided to invest zero of it anywhere. A lot of people will say that I'm stupid and that this money is you know, probably getting smaller with inflation and that it's earning zero money and I completely agree with you and you're 100% right. But every time I decided to try to do something else, that was going to take away my focus from the main thing which is my business. And because my business has unlimited potential and we still haven't even gotten started, anything that I try to do, if I try to earn say five or 10 or 20%, well, I'm, I'm never gonna earn 20% of my money, but say if I earn five or 10% of my money per year, I would take focus from a business that's growing at a 10 to 30% per month, right? So it's like, what makes more sense? You know, I'm not into crypto, I'm not into stocks because I take risk every single day in my business and when my money that is being profited from the business is sitting you know, on the sidelines, I want to make sure that I'm not thinking about it. And stocks, that means I'm investing in some asshole that runs some company somewhere around the world and I don't know what this person is going through, right? Um, I know what is going through my company and I can control that. I can you know, control the, the input and I can control the output. Putting it in stocks, I can't control any of that. I'm just not that guy. The one, one vehicle that I've looked into is real estate, but again, I, you know, I need to study it, I need to learn how to do it, I need to do all that due diligence, and again, it's gonna take focus away from my business. Now, I'm probably at some point in life, I'll probably invest in other vehicles, but I don't think it's the right time just yet, and that's where I see a lot of people make the mistakes. I've got $10,000 in the bank, I've got $20,000 in the bank, I wanna invest it. Dude, you've got, you're broke, you've got no business in investing any money, go put it in a vehicle that's got no, no, no limit to the potential and that you can control the input and the output, right? Um, and kiss, keeping it simple, stupid. Every time you add something into your life, whether that's a, uh, a new task, a new routine, a new uh, thing they have to do at work or in your business, that's another thing that you have to, um, you have to manage and you have to track and you have to do all that. And the only time we add anything new to the business, we introduce a new idea, we introduce a new SOP, a new anything is when we have completely maxed out what we're doing right now and that we just cannot achieve any extra result doing exactly what we're doing and that we just need another thing for us to do that. So that's where those two work hand in hand, I believe. And they literally have, and this is, this is kids, right? This is why I wear black all the time. My closet looks exactly the same. I got four jeans that are all the same. I got four shoes that are all black. I got five shirts that are all black and that's it. Kiss, keeping it simple, stupid. Every single piece of furniture in my house is functional. I don't have paintings on walls and things like that because I don't need it. It's just all stuff that is going to weigh me down, right? <clears throat> the second thing is vision and the why. This is very important. Um, and this is the reason why I started BJK University because two, three years ago, um, well, let me go back. Six years ago, I lost everything. I had a business, uh, fire, no insurance, lost it all, $150,000 of debt, lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so Amazon FBA was the way out of there, right? But then after two years, three years of doing it, I was making, I think like 10 or $15,000 a month in profits. And life was great, you know, I was doing good. My debt, you know, I, I hadn't cleared my debt 100%, but it was getting cleared. So just a couple of years, I'll be done. Um, you know, I was going out with my wife, uh, you know, to, 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 to nice restaurants. We were traveling, we started, you know, Cabo, Cancun, all these places. And then 
I woke up one day and I realized that I just didn't see myself doing this for the next 10, 20, 30 years because I was getting bored with what I was doing, right? And I didn't have a bigger purpose. My purpose three years ago was to clear debt, to get somewhere where I'm making 10, $15,000. But then what? Like, what's the next thing? What's after that, right? And that's when I align myself with the vision, the long-term vision. And the long-term vision is helping people like yourself to simply become aware of the missed opportunities, to give you a skill, give you a tool that can help you accomplish your goals in life without needing to waste years and tens of thousands of dollars learning shit that you'll never use, like what the school system does. Right, so this is very important because this is going to be the driving force into the future. Now look, if you're finding this content valuable, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button because it helps the algorithm rank this video. Now the third thing is team and leaders. Leaders. Um, one thing that I realized long time ago, after my restaurant actually, that one man, one person cannot accomplish anything great in life. And that in order for you to build, like anybody that's built anything great in life has had a team behind them, right? And employees suck. And no offense, maybe you are an employee, maybe you're an amazing employee, but in my experience at least, employees will only give you as much as <clears throat> that 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 or $60 per hour that you pay them, that's it. They clock out, they go home, they forget about it. Our team is usually working at two o'clock in the morning, at three o'clock in the morning because the funnel is broken or because this thing is that or because this customer needs a question to their answer or uh, an answer to their question or whatever. Why? Because they all feel like they are partners in the business. They're all compensated that way. They're all treated that way. So what you need is you need people to create anything great in life, number one. Number two, you need to be able to um, have people like they are partners, right? Because partners don't clock out. Partners have the business running in their mind all the time. Partners give a shit and they will wake up at four o'clock in the morning to answer an email or they will not go to sleep until six o'clock in the morning because they're working on a project or whatever the case may be. They'll work 18, 20 hour days. They don't care, right? And they need to be treated like partners, but most importantly need to help them become leaders because every person inside of us has that leadership characteristic that if it's empowered, if you empower them, they will rise to the top because leaders are awesome, right? So it's very important that you build a team around you, around whatever it is that you're doing in life, and then most importantly, empower them. Make them leaders, make them feel like partners, compensate them like partners, treat them like partners. The fourth thing is decision making. This is super important because this can literally break your business. I don't care how large or how small your business is. Decision making is very important, especially when it comes to ideas. Actually, you know, I think this is supposed to be ideas. So one very important thing is um, a couple of, uh, well, like a year, year and a half ago, um, one of my mentors said, don't obsess over becoming an idea generator, but obsess over becoming a problem solver. I was like, I'm not in a math class. What are you talking about? And he's like, look, we all have great ideas. And I'm pretty sure you, and I know for me as well, that like out of nowhere, I'll just come up with a great idea. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I'll react and I'll act on it, right? Or I'll write it down and I start researching and all that. What you're gonna realize is if you just let time pass, 60 to 80% of ideas you come up with are complete fucking stupid. I mean, I'm talking about they are trash, right? I'm not talking about just you. I'm talking about myself as well, right? So what I do is when I get a new idea like, oh my God, I should add this thing to my business or I should launch this product or I should do this thing, I usually kick it off. I just kick it off in space and I don't write it down or anything. I don't take notes. I hate taking notes. If the idea is good, it will come back to me. It'll keep coming back to me. If it comes back to me two, three days later, I'll push it away again. If it comes back to me a week later, I'll push it away. If it comes back two weeks later, then it's a valid idea. And if I'm still as excited about it two weeks later, then it's actually a great idea. Because if you like, if you write down an idea and do nothing about it and come back to it two weeks later, you'll read it and you'll be like, what? I actually like thought that was a good idea? That's so stupid, you know what I mean? 
But if it's a good idea, without writing it down, it'll keep coming back to you. And then what I do is I pull a sheet and then I start writing pros and cons. And then I'll come back a week later and I'll write pros and cons. And then keep adding, keep adding. I usually do not implement an idea unless it's been, there is thought that have gone into it. That's another thing is thought, thinking, think. We have this amazing brain. This amazing brain is an awesome machine that's very underutilized. We have to truly utilize it. Think. An idea before implementing, I need to at least have thought process gone into it for one to three months, at least. Because great ideas don't just come around every day. You and your company should be pressing your team to become innovative. And you should be innovating all the time. But innovation shouldn't be seven days a week. Right? You shouldn't be innovating seven days a week. Like for me, when I talk, when I think about innovation, I look at Amazon. Amazon started as a bookstore. Innovation was adding music. Innovation was, you know what? We can sell anything. Innovation was when they started AWS. Innovation was when they started the prime, um, the prime program. That's innovation. Innovation isn't, you know, well, let me add this thing. Let me add that thing. And usually new, great ideas take at least a quarter to implement. So if you can only, if you've got a business right now and you can, if you can only come up with one great idea per quarter, that's amazing. That can drive your business massively. And also implementing great ideas shouldn't be as, as, as easy as flicking a switch. It should take weeks and months to implement and perfect and optimize. If it's as easy as let's just add this thing here, remove this, not an idea. That's just another thing that you have to manage and it goes back to kits. Keeping things simple, stupid, right? Doing, achieving the max potential with what you already have here before you start adding shit to it, really. Now look, if you've enjoyed this so far, we've got one more point. What I wanna do is if you click the link below this video, it'll take you to a small presentation where we explain to you exactly how, you know, I found entrepreneurship. I finally succeeded after seven tries. Amazon FBA was business number eight. And then coaching was business number nine. I went seven businesses before that. So what you will be able to get by working with BJK University is you will get my knowledge and my experience seven businesses later. And I want to say about seven or eight years in the work and the process. No, more like six years, six years. So you will accelerate. It'll accelerate your learning curve by six years and seven businesses. And you will go to the thing that actually worked. You check it out. If you like what you see, you can book a call to chat with one of our enrollment advisors where they'll see if the, you know, if our system is actually right for you. So be sure to check out that link. Number five is stay humble. And this is very important. And it's not about just like, oh, well, don't buy Rolexes. And it's not what I mean by staying humble. Look, I can be, I can own a yacht and a private jet and wear a Rolex, which I don't. My watch is still broken. It still doesn't tell the right time. And I could have a Rolls Royce and I could have a mansion and all that, but still be humble, right? If you deep down truly care for, you know, materialistic things and you're like, you know what? This Ro driving this Rolls Royce really makes me feel great deep down and it helps me perform at my best, then do it. But do understand, you may, it shouldn't be where the $5,000 a month lease for a Rolls Royce is like 50 or 60% of your income. It should be like less than 10% of your income, right? So you could still do all that, but being humble is like, if your team wants to talk to you, you're not too good to get on a call with them. If your friend that you had, your high school friends wanna hang out with you, they were your best friends when you were a nobody, but now that you are a somebody, they wanna hang out and talk to you, you don't ignore them because, oh, well, you're not, you're just not on my pedestal anymore, right? I'm above and then you're here. When you're, there's a, a saying in Arabic, um, you know, their nose is to the sky or something like that, you know? It's like their nose is like, you know, they're like, you know, they're like this, you know what I mean? It's like they think so much of themselves. When that happens, that's when you will lose. Because I've seen it happen to very close people of mine, very successful people in life, and they just ate shit because people around them started perceiving them differently, you know? Like when I'm too good to talk to you, or I feel like I'm too good to talk to you, and you have had a lot to do with my current success, at some point you're gonna be like, well, go screw yourself. Who the hell are you? I don't need you anymore. You know what I mean? Like I can, 
I helped you get here, I could probably do this on my own as well, right? And to understand that you can't accomplish great things without people, right? So this is very important for you to understand. So again, if you found this video valuable, please be sure to subscribe to the channel as we drop videos just like this every single day, seven days a week, sometimes twice per day. Uh, and also, if you want to learn from us, click the link in the description. Hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.